So there wasn't a video last week because I was in America, first time actually, it's, uh, I would consider that some kind of accomplishment, but then I was told by a whole bunch of people that it's not something I should be proud of, kind of a just be glad that you don't live here kind of thing. Georgia was really cool though. I was under the impression that achievements by the word's definition are something that you can look back on with pride. Generally this is true, everyone's put time and effort into overcoming something a little ridiculous and the payoff tends to be worth it. It's an easy value proposition, I do difficult thing and I'm rewarded with gamer points and a pat on the back. This is a sacred contract, don't abuse it. The issue isn't necessarily with difficult achievements since I think the world needs that to put everything into perspective, but I draw a pretty thick line at annoying achievements I guess. Ones where the game is asking you to do really dumb things in pursuit of something that no one cares about. Not even achievements that you can dispatch in seconds by doing something oddly specific. I mean a slow, often painful process that doesn't give you any satisfaction when you overcome it. I want my achievements to feel like achievements, not like inconveniences. Think about it. I like to pride myself on being able to turn any one type of game into another. I'm sure everyone can do this if they put their mind to it, but it takes a certain amount of optimism to turn even the most boring of video games into something that can be gleaned for enjoyment. You know Euro Truck Simulator? Now it's exciting! Inversely, you'd need a decent amount of creativity or sadomasochism to turn a fun game on its head. Wouldn't a Metal Gear game be more exciting if you used something that gave you infinite ammo and nearly infinite stealth? No, it wouldn't be, it'd be quite boring actually. Do you want to turn the exciting world of Dead Rising into a painfully slow survival game? There's a mode for that. If you beat Dead Rising like normal and then play through overtime and beat the final boss, you unlock Infinity Mode, which is effectively the game's version of a sandbox mode. And that's really cool, because Dead Rising without a time limit, there's so many things you could do with that. Like, survive. For a really, really long time. How do you make an exciting zombie game really boring? Easy, you put the player into a mode where you can die really easily and then ask them to survive for 14 hours of consecutive real time. I say consecutive because the fun thing about infinity mode is that the only time you can save is when you die, which you don't want to be doing if you want the 7 day survivor achievement. Frank's health steadily decreases by one block every 20 in-game minutes or 100 seconds of real time, which means that your focus shouldn't be on dealing with zombies but instead skirting around them en route to the food court and that delicious orange juice. Unfortunately, which is where the methodical, really boring tactical side of this challenge comes into play, food doesn't regenerate in the same way that it does in the main game. You also don't get any blenders to play with, so endless survival just isn't possible. Surviving for this long a period of time drains all of the fun out of this game and narrows it down to one of Dead Rising features, but not the best feature. All of the creativity that you can put towards killing zombies takes a backseat as you frantically search for more food, and at that point the game has lost a lot of its luster. If you can make a goofy zombie game, boring, that's worth an achievement on its own. Achievements for multiplayer games are tremendous ass. It's one thing having your skills put to the test in grueling environments specifically designed to do just that, but multiplayer games are a complete crapshoot. Some just ask you to pump a lot of your time into killing lots of enemies like in Gears of War, while some want you to top the international leaderboard like in Tom Clancy's Go Fuck Yourself You're Never Getting This Achievement. But if you have more time than any one person should have, then it's a cakewalk. Honestly, I thought Overwatch's The Floor is Love would be along the same lines, but then I was hit by a sweet right hook from that old enemy reality. She's got a bad habit of turning up at the exact wrong time. Lucio is actually the best character in this game and I won't have it any other way. He heals people with music, you can speed up whole teams at a time, and the most recent update to the game turned him into a pimp, so the rest of the cast never really stood a chance really. Oh yeah, and he can ride on walls, which gives him the kind of mobility that legends are made out of. This is important because one of his character specific achievements wants you to land a killing blow on three enemies while attached to a wall. Less shoot them while wall riding and more boop them into a pit and hope for the best. All within the same life. There's two ways of getting this done, and you're gonna have to take my word on this for now since my fists of ham haven't been able to press all the buttons in quite the right order yet. Either you get lucky and catch half a team unawares, and they just so happen to be on a map where environmental kills are possible, 
and located near a cliff, or you pick them off one by one by playing very aggressively and hoping that you don't get annihilated by the half a dozen characters who can hard counter you. The number of times where I've been one boop away from getting the achievement only to have dreams crushed by a Roadhog hook or a McCree flashbang, it's just... Why do we struggle? It does get to you though. When your two kills up, even someone with nerves of titanium is prone to buckling under this kind of pressure. He's just looking for a place in this wacky world. Leave him be. It's a fine line with some of the harder Overwatch achievements between the natural playset of a character and doing something oddly specific. You should be wall riding and booping people off ledges wherever possible as Lucio, but the focus should be on being near your team rather than throwing yourself at the nearest wall. Lucio may be our lord and savior, but even he has his limits. My focus here isn't necessarily on difficult achievements because I believe there's a time and place for your skills as a video game person man to be stretched to breaking point. But there is most definitely such a thing as an asshole challenge. Not sure if that's the correct terminology. I'm on a plane at the moment and the seven year old next to me doesn't seem to know. What I mean by that is any time a video game is asking for a set of criteria to be met that no one would ever be able to naturally anticipate. There's like this inbuilt limit which you can reasonably expect from the average player, which is maybe why it took so long for Mega Man games to get achievements. They were never going to be kind. Mega Man 9 has an achievement that asks you to beat the game without dying, which considering that it's maybe kinda the hardest game in the franchise is like asking you to sit through an 8 hour flight without murdering the small child kicking the back of your seat. Pretty tough, but doable. People are able to beat Dark Souls while being orally stimulated, so anything's possible. But then Mega Man 10 came out shortly after and rewrote the rulebook. Beat Mega Man 9 without dying? Quite tricky. Beat Mega Man 10 without being hit once? Actually, no, could you maybe not do that? Mr. Perfect from Mega Man 10 exists solely to taunt you with potential greatness. I have no doubts that it's possible and with enough time and work towards it you could knock it out without thinking twice about it, but that's the thing. I'm not sure I like this game enough for that. I don't think there's ever been a game released on these shores or elsewhere which I would consider doing a no-hit run of. Maybe it sits well with a speedrunning community who can dispatch it before breakfast, but for normal people it's asking you to overcome a non-existent margin for error and I don't think that's very realistic. Honestly, if it wasn't an achievement, very few people would try this on their own and I guess that's the only positive here. Beating the game this way gives you all sorts of pride. Me, I'd rather do something fun. My tolerance for video games has developed over the years. Back when I was just looking for something to fill vast voids of time, I would have done anything to make a game longer. You could have had me go back through a game and collect whatever the fuck you wanted and I would have probably done it. No collectible was too menial. Times change though and at the age of 21 I've been worn down by the weights of the world into the bitter old man you see before you today. There's a variety of contributing factors, most of which are too relevant or personal to mention, but once you've gone back through a game picking up random collectibles in pursuit of that coveted 100% completion status, you never have to do it again. And yet I keep coming back to Assassin's Creed 2 to pick up feathers or Uncharted to pick up artifacts and it's aged me so much. At least the Riddler trophies from the Batman Arkham games, while being numerous and fucking terrible, are integrated into the game rather than layered on top of an already completed adventure. Did you know you can get an achievement for shooting lots of birds in Grand Theft Auto 4? Ah, oh, yeah, it's loads of fun! How about you go do that while I go do... literally anything else? The Endangered Species Achievement is awarded to any player dedicated or desperate enough to shoot 200 birds scattered around the vast landscape that is Liberty City. No, that doesn't mean gun down as many prostitutes as you can. In this game, you can do so many things, including a lot of things you can't do in GTA 5, you've got to slow down everything and concentrate on some really hard to locate pigeons. This is also the same game where merely shooting your gun once in public is typically enough to attract the attention of other people with guns who don't like you very much. Much. So having the patience to wander all over this city looking for birds to shoot while staying out of the way of the police should be valued more by society. Unfortunately, it's only video games that give out medals for doing dumb, stupid, boring shit. I used to like collecting miscellaneous items, but GTA 4 broke me. I've never quite been the same since.
I hadn't thought about it much before writing this video, but I think my least favorite achievements are ones that require you to completely change how you play a game. Most of the time, this is a good thing. Any game that gives you the freedom to work your way through it however you like is gonna be valued quite highly by people playing it, but only if it feels like the game is built around these different styles. It's kind of the difference between being stealthy in an action game and turning the controller upside down because, you know, it'd be fun. There's not a lot in The Binding of Isaac that actively encourages you to switch up your playstyle beyond dealing with low DPS runs or builds of high survivability. But the most recent DLC, Afterbirth Plus, brought in an achievement that forces you to play in one particularly stupid way. This game has a lot of achievements. Some of them are terrible. This is the same game with Edmund McMillan's name attached to it that wants you to beat comically difficult bullet hell bosses as characters who are made of candy floss. But these accomplishments reward player skill and understanding of the game's mechanics. It's the Key is an achievement specifically designed to fuck with people who've put hundreds of hours into the game. Which, considering the Rebirth had been out for just over two years before Afterbirth Plus came out, that's a lot of hours. In order to get this achievement, you have to beat the game without picking up any hearts, bombs, or pennies. The keys are fine, like it implies in the title, can't be restricting the player too much, can we? That'd be crazy! The problem here, as you may expect of a game as relatively repetitive as The Binding of Isaac, is that muscle memory will absolutely ruin you. All those hours put into a game where you pick up every item without a second thought are pitted directly against you in a scenario where picking up most common consumables is the worst idea in the world. There's very little skill involved here. It all comes down to your abilities to keep your concentration for up to 45 minutes and I guess be good enough for the game to not need health, bomb or money pickups. Sadly, even when you're on the other side of it and have unlocked one of these stupid cards, it doesn't feel like you've accomplished much. If you aren't going for 100%, you shouldn't feel obligated to pursue this achievement, and like so many others on this list, if you didn't know about it, you'd never get it accidentally. No accomplishment, only relief. This is probably Luigi, and there's a lot to enjoy about The Binding of Isaac from a game design perspective, but I get the sense that it's constantly pushing up against the boundary of what the player will put up with. If there wasn't so much variance that dictates what constitutes a good run or a bad run, I don't think it would be as popular. I'd still play it! It's a, it's a very serious problem at this stage. Have you got an idea that you'd like me to turn to a countdown? Let me know in a comment down below and make sure you check out my Twitter where I'll be turning the best submissions into a poll where you can then decide the best topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.